Hi everybody, just a quick couple of words about the chapters, enemies and friends. Um, again, as far as the structure of the book goes, we have anchor chapters and then we have these little transitional chapters. This is obviously a little transitional chapter. It's only um, three or four pages, the entire two chapter segment. But I think it's important that we get a sense of just the rawness of nerves in that situation and how everything is amplified. A simple dispute between uh, two soldiers becomes something far greater when you're talking about every moment being a life or death situation. When we, when we have little arguments at home or in school, it, it's these things blow over. But when you're dealing with walking through enemy territory, you're dealing with jungles, you're dealing with the fear, constant fear of death, it kind of amplifies just everything. So uh, the two the two chapters tell a brief story about Lee Strunk and Dave Jensen. Now, you ask yourself, why does this chapter matter? Well, first, it establishes the concept of trust in life or death situation. It's hard enough having the enemy in front of him. And that, this is what Dave Jensen says after, um, after the whole incident with the jackknife and Lee Strunk winds up having the jackknife and everything like that. And there's that funny moment at the end of the enemies chapter, it gets a little bit more serious in the friends chapter, and and Dave Jensen is struggling with the fact that he's got this enemy in front of him, the Vietnamese Viet Cong, and he also now has this psychological enemy behind him because he thinks uh, Lee Strunk might might uh, take his life. Might after he broke his nose, he thinks. It might be time for retribution, and there's this constant fear. And second, it establishes, like I said, the rawness of nerves in that environment. It's hard enough, again, having an enemy, but throw all of that on top of it, and it makes a situation just unbearable. And that's what Dave Jensen is going through, an unbearable situation. In his own doing, I mean, he's the one that kind of, escalated the argument with Lee Strunk, but Lee, is, Lee Strunk is the one that took the jackknife, so it is kind of a justifiable argument, but we see just the extremeness of it as, as the situation unfolds and their dispute uh, kind of progresses. I love how they become friends, though. Um, it says it didn't happen overnight. It wasn't just like all of a sudden, hey, let's be friends. But eventually, they realized that trusting one another was more important than uh, their dispute, and they came to a mutual agreement. In fact, they came to uh, what they call in the text a wheelchair pact. The two of them are discussing what to do if one or the other should be wounded to the point of not being able to walk. The extreme life-changing injury versus a simple well, not simple, but versus a common wound. And they agree that if either of them should have a wheelchair wound, that the other one would kill them rather than have them suffer through a life of misery. And then the situation comes. Lee Strunk takes a step, boom, steps on a, uh, on a landmine and is blown to bits. His legs are... are um, severed and here's Dave Jensen looking at him wondering if he can actually follow through with the pact and in the end he doesn't uh, because Lee Strunk's begging him don't kill me don't kill me don't kill me and then um, Dave Jensen just simply can't do it. Uh, Strunk frowned at the sky he, uh, he passed out again and he woke up and he said don't kill me I won't Jensen said I'm serious, sure, but you've got to promise, swear it to me, swear it, you won't kill me. And Dave Jensen said, I swear. And then, a little later, we carried Strunk to the dust-off chapter. Jensen reached out and touched the good leg. Go on now, he said. Later, we heard that Strunk died somewhere over Chule which seemed a re to relieve Dave Jensen of an enormous weight. 
because oh, at the end, Dave Jensen goes back on their pack to to kill each other if they have a wheelchair wound, and he feels both justified and guilty. It's it's this uh, emotional firestorm that he has. But in the end, he chooses to abide by Lee Strunk's wishes and not kill him because the fear of death is worse than the fear of living with one leg. But to Dave Jensen's relief, he actually winds up dying uh, in the air. And so he's relieved of the burden of not following through. And he also knows that Dave Jensen is at peace. So, like I said, a very short chapter. Uh, the next chapter is a really interesting one. It's called How to Tell a True War Story, where we really get into a lot of the nuance of the text, and it lays out a lot of why he's writing it. Also, what's the difference between real truth and fictionalized truth, etc. So, uh, we'll move towards that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this chapter. Make sure you respond to the prompt.